Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining and welcome to today's session, Content Hub and Dynamic Media Training for New Users. Uh, we are joined today by Sean Taplin, um, Senior Solutions Consultant here at Ampliance. And before we start, I just want to draw your attention to the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions at all during the session, please pop them in the box and we'll answer them at the end. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass you over to Sean. Thanks, Maddie. Uh, hi everyone, uh, good afternoon and, and uh, good morning to those of you joining from the US. Um, my role here at Ampliance is to support customers uh, onboarding onto the platform. Uh, so we usually hold a session like uh, the one this afternoon just to help our users get familiar with the platform and, and the features of the platform. Um, so in terms of what we'll be covering today, I'll be giving you a high level overview of the, the platform. Um, and then go into two specific solutions of the platform, Content Hub and Dynamic Media. So Content Hub is um, where all of your assets will be stored. So I'll be talking to you about how your account can be organized through folders and what we call asset stores, which I'll introduce you to um, during the session. We'll talk to you about how you get assets into the system and the most common ways of doing that. We'll talk to you about what publishing means um, and how assets get st stored with our CDNs. And then we'll talk you through some of the most common things you'll be doing within your account, such as reverting back to previous versions of assets, being able to rename, download, search for your assets, um, how to tag them, which is another way of helping you to search for them, um, how you can share your assets with other users internally or, or externally to, to the business. And then we'll touch upon Dynamic Media, the delivery of those assets. So we'll keep this at a high level for today's session. Well, this is um, when assets are published in the system, you can use parameters to serve those to your, across your different digital channels. So I'll, I'll introduce some of those topics uh, and ways of doing that in this session today. And then we'll finish off with some of the documentation areas and points of contact for you as well. Okay, so from platform introduction. Um, this is a high level view of the Ampliance platform. Um, what we'll be covering today is the, the upload of your digital assets into the content hub and we'll be touching upon the dark media and the delivery of those assets via the dark media apis tomorrow there is a, a further session on diamond content which is the ampliance uh, headless cms and um, that will be delivered by my colleague here at the same time at 3 p.m uk time tomorrow um, alongside the platform, we have an expert services team, which is where I sit in. Uh, I help customers with onboarding onto the platform and any other custom work they might need uh, with regards to perhaps bulk deleting, bulk renaming assets, for example. And then we have a customer success team that's uh, there for you during the business as usual process to support you uh, as you use the platform on a daily basis. I'll be touching upon Content Hub and, and Dynamic Media today. Uh, so the Content Hub is where you'll upload all of your images, your videos. Uh, it might even include things like um, PDFs, GIFs, SVGs. Um, essentially, we can we can host um, and at least store all of all of your assets in one place. Dynamic Media is the delivery of those assets, <clears throat> so you can upload a single master asset to Ampliance. And then use the Dynamic Media functionality to generate different variants of that same asset and to deliver it to the corresponding channel. Um, you can use functionality like points of interest as well alongside for your content media and that enables you to set a point of interest for your say for a banner asset for example and use the Dynamic Media functionality to crop to that point of interest when you're serving it for tablet and, and mobile devices for example. For video, uh, we generate what we call transcode profiles within Ampliance, which I'll show you a little bit later on. And these, similar to imagery, generate different variants of, of the master video asset that you've uploaded to Ampliance. When you uh, store and subsequently publish assets um, on, on Ampliance, <clears throat> they're stored and published within Origin um, and subsequently then held on our mid tier cache. And then when the user viewing your website uh, requests that page, the assets then get uh, stored on our CDNs. So we use um, Akamai and CenturyLink, and we have a load balancer 
that will um, constantly monitor which CDN will deliver the assets fastest to the end user that's viewing your website. Um, the mid-tier cache, if in any event, a CD, both CDNs went down, which is extremely unlikely, uh, we have the mid-tier cache, which can continue serving your assets for up to a year. Uh, due to this infrastructure, we can offer a, a full nines SLA in terms of uptime for content. Um, all customers are set up um, on the HTTP2 uh, internet protocol as, as standard. And we offer 24-7, 365 days of the year support to all of our customers. Okay, so I'm not gonna spend the whole time in, in, a, in a presentation deck. Um, we will be going into the content hub and I'll be showing you how to do things. Um, hopefully you already have your, your access. Uh, you should receive an email from support.ampience.com which will contain your password. And where you log in is to ondemand.ampience.com. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, I'll be logging into a training environment so look, different to the environment that you have in terms of the way the assets are, are organized. Um, so that's uh, the, the next topic of conversation is uh, the first thing is when you got your assets in, how do you want to organize those in, within your account? Um, so you have a, a folder structure which you can set up. Um, here we've got a set of what we call asset stores here on the left hand side. And they're slightly different to folders in that you can set uh, permissions on them. Um, the common set of permissions are read, read only, access to the asset store. Um, you might set a specific delete permissions or remove or, or give certain users permissions to delete assets and download and edit uh, user rights to asset stores. You can have different permissions on different asset stores. So for example, I might have read-only access to the assets one here, um, but I might have full, full permissions to this templates one. So you can have for specific users different permissions across asset stores. Despite uh, the folder structure, um, files should be named uniquely. The reason for this is um, assets get published and subsequently served via our CDNs. And they get published by a URL like this. And as you can see, there's no folder structure in this URL here. So um, we have a concept of last publish win. So if you upload another asset with the same file name and publish that asset, that will be the version that would then be live on, on your site or whichever channel is requesting that asset. So we recommend having unique names um, across your assets. So the first method of getting assets into the system is via the SFTP. Uh, we provide an SFTP location for, for all customers. Um, it's most predominantly used for product assets because they're generally processes that are running off the product assets as they get ingested into the platform. Uh, a lot of our customers will have third party software, maybe uploading assets directly into our SFTP location like a PIM system, for example, or they might have the photography studio directly uploading to the SFTP. Uh, there is an hourly bulk upload job that runs that brings assets from the SFTP to the Ampliance Content Hub. Um, so, spare me a sec. We use um, Ampliance. There are multiple different FTP clients you can have. Your company may have a preferred option from an FTP. TP perspective. Um, we provide you with a host username and password <clears throat> to connect. And you can see this has opened up a couple of directories here for this that's set up for this account. The directories can also map with what is it within your account. So if I just go back to my account here, within assets. I've got a content and a product folder. Within my content folder, I've got the subfolder and subfolder two, which relate to these two folders in here. So what that means is I can drop assets into specific folders within the FTP. When they get ingested into the platform, they'll go into those specific folders within your account. Um, 
the FTP and the bulk uploads are set to run hourly, as I mentioned, uh, but you can, within your account, within tools and bulk upload, run that job immediately if you need to. Um, so you can see when, then it, when it's next scheduled to run. Uh, running that job immediately will bring in any assets that are currently sitting in that um, FTP location and bring them into your account. So there are ways to bypass that hourly bulk upload um, if you need to get assets in faster. The other way <clears throat> of uploading assets is via the manual upload option within the content hub. This would be typically used for your content imagery, such as those used for banners within your blogs, uh, within grids, for example because there are no processes that will be running off these specific type of assets. Um, the way to get assets in manually is through this upload assets option within your account. And you can bring in your assets from other third party sources like Dropbox, Box, Google Drive. Um, in this example, I'm just going to upload some from my own desktop. Okay, so one thing that this has done here is it's notified me that there's an asset that already exists in my account. Um, and it's given me the option here to either overwrite the existing, which would just directly replace it, or rename new. So I'm going to choose rename new. What this will do is um, append a version number to that asset. So here it's appended a, an underscore one to it. Um, so that it's named uniquely within the platform. There is a 100 megabyte per file um, limitation in terms of uploading assets. So um, any, any files that you have that are over 100 megabytes, we recommend you upload by the SFTP. We also recommend you upload videos by the SFTP as well. So I, I mentioned um, transcode profiles earlier. So these are the transcode profiles that are set up as default for your account. Um, you can create your own custom ones, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. But these get, um, if you upload an asset via the FTP, then these will get applied and generated automatically for a video. This one here, which I uploaded manually, doesn't have any of the transcode profiles applied. So I need to add them in uh, for each one and then publish them. So I just recommend that you Upload your videos via the SFTP. Videos that took commonly over 100 megabytes as well, so it just makes sense to upload them by that, that method. Um, when assets are ingested into the platform, most commonly via the SFTP, they're set to automatically publish the asset upon ingestion. However, when they're brought in manually, uh, they're not automatically published. Um, so if you wanted to make that asset available for use online, then you can just use the cloud icon here. That will publish the asset. You can see it's published in progress. And then it's available via the, the URL to be requested. Um, via the uh, SFTP, we can have different bulk uploads set up on different directories. So. I might have two bulk upload jobs, one for content and one for product. My bulk upload job for content, I might set up my bulk upload job to uh, not publish assets upon ingestion, but I might have a bulk upload job that schedule uh, that will publish the assets upon ingestion. So um, if you're configuring this with um, even myself, if I'm onboarding you onto the platform or you want to change some of the things, aspects of your account, um, your customer success manager can go through these points with you um, if you do need to set up additional uh, bulk upload jobs. A little bit around uh, published status icons. <clears throat> so this asset here uh, is telling me that this is the latest version of the asset um, that, and that, that has been published. The publish icon for this one here um, indicates to me that the asset has been published, but it's not the latest version that's on use online. So it might have been 
replaced by manual upload, for example, but not, not then published. So to make that the, the latest version, I would just click on the cloud icon. And then I'll get a, an update to the icon with the green tick. So that suggests to me now that this is the latest version um, that's on the publish URL. Okay, so just to summarize some of those key points between SFTP and manual upload options, we recommend using SFTP for larger asset ingestions where you can't use the manual up upload option because the assets are over 100 megabytes. Use the SFTP for video ingestion. This will ensure that um, your transcode profiles get applied automatically. Uh, this route is predominantly used for your product assets. That's because we'll have generally for most customers, a, a script in place that will group your assets together into what we call a media set, which I'll go into more detail on later, but that requires you to upload them via the SFTP. You can mirror your directory structure in SFTP with that of your content hub. So assets go into a folder that you've uploaded to in the SFTP. Um, assets are ingested hourly via the SFTP, but you can override that if you need to. Generally, bulk upload jobs are set to automatically publish the assets when they're ingested by the SFTP and also set to automatically overwrite assets um, when ingested with the same name. For manual upload, we, uh, the, this can be used for, for assets under 100 megabytes, um, as well as for any assets that don't have specific processes running off them, like the, like the product assets, like I mentioned. If you need to use the assets for online purposes, then you need to manually publish the asset. Um, you'll be given a notification when manually uploading as to whether you want to overwrite it or rename new. Um, when you're uploading, I recommend that you select the folder first uh, before clicking the upload assets option. This will ensure the asset goes into the folder that you, you want straight away. Um, if you upload it, without selecting the folder, you do still have the option to drag and drop it into the folder that you wish after, uh, but that just saves you, saves you a bit of time. Uh, via manual upload, you can upload from third party software such as Box and Google Drive. And obviously this is a faster upload process than SFTP, it's, a, it's immediate. Um, so the, the key two differences between SFT upload and manual upload. Okay, so um, I mentioned earlier, assets when published are then available on our CDM. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of things with regards to this which will um, uh, you, which you may notice when you're live with on, on your site with Ampliance. In regards to CDM cache, let's say there's a scenario where you have um, an asset on your site. In this example we've got camera uh, underscore asset file that's been uploaded and it's been ingested, it's published, your website makes a request to the asset, and this is what you see on, on your site. But let's say tomorrow, you've changed, um, there's been a request to change that to the, the back version of the camera. Um, so you upload the asset with the same file name uh, to replace the previous one that was existing on, on, within your account. What you may notice is that it takes up to um, 24 hours before you see that new version of the asset existing on your site. It might be a lot less than that. It might be 20 minutes, it might be an hour, could be three hours. It all depends on when that URL was cached with our CDM. Um, in instances where you need to bypass that, we do have a, an application, which I'll show you in a moment, which you can use. Um, but there is a benefit and a negative to having a CDM cache. Uh, the first, the, in terms of the positive, um, having a higher CDM cache is better from a performance perspective because it means that um, every 24 hours the request is going back to our origin to retrieve that asset, the latest version that exists within our origin. Um, if you have it uh, say at 12 hours then it would be making more requests to origin which takes longer to return the asset to the, to the end user. So that's why having a higher CDM cache is um, beneficial from a, from a page performance perspective. The downside is, as I mentioned, it may take uh, a period of time for, for you to see that new version of the asset visible on your site. Um, 
So for that, we have a Dyke Media application. So this is on permission space. Uh, so if you do need access to this, um, please let our customer success team know and uh, they can provision that to the relevant people, users that need access to it on your account. Um, yeah, the app is available through this apps um, tray here, which looks like a box. Click through to Dime Media app. Uh, and there is a, a credits system in place. You'll have 120 um, asset purge requests available per month. They get renewed every month. But the process is um, once you've overwritten an asset in your account and then republished it, if you want to purge the asset, then go to the DM application, find the, the name of the asset, and then uh, you have the option to purge. I don't have permission on this account. It would be, it'd be, um, wouldn't be grayed out if I had permission. I can purge the asset and that will then send a request to our CDNs in order to um, make that purge request. Typically it's done around sort of two to three hours. So it'll, it'll be faster than the uh, waiting for the CDN cache to clear if it's, if it's going to clear in say 24 hours or 23 hours. Um, but it gives you a bit more flexibility to make those changes quicker. In addition, you've got the option within the C, uh, within Dyke Media application to unpublish an asset. What this will do is remove the asset from our CDN. It's subject to the cache. So it depends on when that um, URL was cached on a CDN but it will make it unavailable on our CDNs within 24 hours. And then it will return either a 404 image if you have that set up um, or a file not found instead. If you need it, that's in circumstances where you really need to ensure that asset is no longer available. The toggle preview here would give you visibility over, if I've just uploaded an asset to the content hub, um, it would show you this version here, the latest version that you've uploaded. The origin version shows you the published version. So in this instance here, the, the one I've uploaded and the one that's published is the same. Um, they'd only be different if in like this example here, where I've uploaded a new version, but the published version is this. So to correct that, in that instance, I would just need to publish the asset and then they become the same. Okay, so the next uh, set of slides I'm going to go through are some of the common things that you'll be doing within the account, such as being able to restore back to a previous version, how you rename assets, how you get them out of the system, um, how you search for them, and how you can share them internally and externally. So um, the first one is asset restoring. Let's go back to the account. And I will show you an asset. Uh, to see the version history, you just click on the properties icon for the asset and go to version history. Now, um, we create versions for assets based on different things that might happen in the platform, such as this asset was published today. So that creates a version in our system. But the ones that you'll probably care most about are the ones where it's actually a physical version of that asset has been uploaded. Um, and that's where you can see those ones which have a revertible icon next to them. So I can see different versions that have been uploaded for this one. Uh, so for all the look for, if I wanted to restore back to this version of the asset, just click restore version. And um, this, as indicated, the publish icon here has indicated to me this is not the latest version that's available on the CDN. So I just published that. And that would ensure that the latest version is the one I've just restored back to. So that's version history and how to restore assets. The next uh, common thing you might want to do within the platform is, is renaming of assets. So to do that, um, click on the settings icon and choose rename. And I can choose to add, uh, I'll just choose to add an underscore one to this one. The name of the asset is the what gets published in the URL. 
The label is um, just another name we assign to it within the system. So you could call this asset something else for the label if you, if you needed to. Um, most commonly, it'll just be set to the same, same name. And then I can save and publish that. And now it's renamed and, and it's available now on the new, on the new URL. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that it won't allow you to rename it to something um, that already exists within your account. So just going back to my point earlier, um, you will need to rename it to something that's unique. For asset downloading, <clears throat> um, when you, again, clicking the settings cog will uh, throw up the, the menu and you can download the asset. This will give you the original version that you've uploaded into Ampliance. If you needed to upload or download multiple uh, assets within the system, then you can choose this toggle selector here. So having that turned off just enables you to select single assets, whereas having it turned on enables you to select multiple assets. You can also do things like um, uh, shift select. So if I wanted to download all the assets uh, here, for example, I've just shift selected to download. Uh, I don't have permission on this one, um, but uh, this is another one of the permissions that I mentioned earlier, which would enable you to download all of those assets at once. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the next thing you, you'll most likely want to do within your assets is search search for them. Um, and there's a few different ways you can do this within your account. So if I wanted to um, search for, if I knew the name of the asset had yellow in it, for example, I can put in yellow with a, an asterisk and that will find me anything that has yellow in the file name. Um, and the asterisk here is ensured that it will look for anything that might have, uh, might be appended after the, the yellow in the file name too. Uh, on top of that, I can use a ternary operator like or and search for something like Anya. I'll put another asterisk after that. And that will look for anything that has uh, yellow or Anya in the file name. But if I look at some of these assets, they don't have yellow or Anya in the file name. <clears throat> That's because on the asset, there is some uh, metadata uh, on the asset. So for some customers, you might have this set up already. Uh, if you don't, it's, it's something we can do as a, as a project with you uh, to set this up. And it helps from a, um, a searchability perspective within your account. This data can also be used within, uh, on the front end too. So you can actually get access to this data through requests via the API if you needed to. Um, these schemas can be set up um, according to your requirements. So you could have whatever fields you needed to in here. Um, so just, just that capability enables you to better search for assets within the, within the system. Okay, uh, another way you can, you can better search for assets in the system is through the filter option here. <clears throat> So I may want to um, search for any assets that were created today. So I can add filter created, created date, add in the date today, and that will show me any assets that I've created today. There are a host of other options in here. So you might want to just search for, if I remove this one, I might just want to search by mime type. So I just want to see what PNGs I have in the system, for example. And that gives me that option through that filter. Um, the metadata one also has options in here. So I can add the brand field that was in my custom metadata schema. Search for Anya. And then that will help me search specifically for any assets that have Anya in the, in the brand field name within my custom metadata schema. Another way in which you might want to um, search for assets within the system is by applying tags to them. 
<clears throat> so for an asset, I could add a tag to this, such as leather jacket. I can add multiple tags to it as well, if like season or whatever I need to add to it. This then becomes available uh, under the tag section. So I can now filter my search for any assets that I've tagged with leather jacket. See if there's any urgent questions on here. Okay, yeah, I can see there's some questions coming through. So we'll have some time at the end to, to address any of those questions. Okay, um, the next um, task you may want to be able to do within your account is to share assets. And you can do that via the uh, media share application within the account. So if I go to list of assets, just in tag them. Let's say I wanted to share all of these assets with uh, someone internally uh, or externally to the business. I can select those and then drag out uh, my workspace on the right hand side and drag and drop those assets into my workspace. I click actions and then media share. And I can give it a title. And company name and I can set how long I want these assets to be available for. So in this example, I'm just going to set them to be available for two days, generate the URL, and I can now share this URL with um, the users that I only want to share this, these set of assets with. So they don't need access to Ampliance in order to access this, um, and they can select which assets they want to download or just download all of them. So that's a good way of being able to share assets that exist in your account uh, without having to use some a third party like WeTransfer or something like that. Okay, uh, so I mentioned media sets earlier, so I'm going to introduce what they are. Some of you will already have these in effect on your account, um, or it might be something that you might look to do after seeing uh, seeing these next set of slides and, and what some of the benefits are. Um, a media set is typically used on your product details page within the viewer to display the assets that exist for a given product. Uh, Ampliance create a script um, for you, so we, we do that on our side, that will read the file names of your product assets uh, that are uploaded via the SFTP. And on every bulk upload job, so if I just go back to the slide that I had earlier, when the assets are coming in, say from your photography studio, um, when the hourly bulk upload job runs, the media set creation job runs too and they group the assets into that media set. Um, they then form one object in Ampliance um, and one URL, which your viewer will request from us. And that set will then contain all the assets that exist for that given product uh, that you've ingested. Um, you don't need to worry about ingesting all the assets that belong to that product at once. So you might upload three assets for a product on Monday the set will be created on our side and then maybe Friday some additional assets are shot for that product, in which case you can upload them remaining on Friday and they'll automatically go into the set that already existed and uh, the set will be updated with all six assets. So you can upload them at any point uh, for a given product. What that then looks like within Ampliance is this. So you can see it's got a set created here. Um, this set has four assets within it and you can see it's ordered um, with a, by the suffix that's um, been appended to the asset names as they've come in. So that's how we determine the order for them and the key identifier is normally a SKU or a product ID. We just need a way of being able to identify which assets belong to a given uh, well, for a set in order to be able to create it. So if you don't have this in effect today, you think it would be of use, um, feel free to reach out to your customer success manager on this one and we can pick that up with you. Okay, I'm gonna talk now about some of the, um, the serving of your assets online, how that works. I'll keep it at a pretty basic level for, for today's um, conversation. 
and I'll talk to you about the pram some of the most common set of parameters, uh, what transformation templates are and how they can be used. And then I'll also talk about uh, video transcode profiles as well. So most of this will be easier if I show you uh, directly in your account. <clears throat> so I'll just pick up an asset. Okay, so if I were to use this asset everywhere on my site, uh, wherever, wherever this product asset gets displayed, um, it's going to be bad for, from a performance perspective. So I can see this asset is the original that I uploaded. Uh, it's 108 kilobytes. So this, for example, wouldn't be performant if you were to serve this asset, uh, say for a thumbnail on your products details page. So this is where the Dyke Media functionality comes into play, where you can set a command, and then let's say I want to serve this uh, for thumbnail, so I might do this at a width of say 80 pixels. And then this might be the, the sort of parameter that I use on uh, for my thumbnail. I can, if I just move that back up to something a bit larger, so you can see, actually before I do that, um, what that has an impact on is the file size. So it's now reduced down to 1.87 kilobytes. That's obviously a big file saving and will help from a page performance. What I can also do is append additional parameters on top of this one. So if I wanted to append, say, a quality setting uh, of 85. So we do uh, set up a number of account defaults for you on your account. Uh, unless you've made a request to change this, it's typically set to 80%. But you can override the account default quality setting through the parameters here. So in this example, I'm going to override it to say 85%. So that, that is now serving the asset of a width of 800 pixels and a quality of 85%. There are a host of parameters you can use. Uh, the most common are width, height, and quality. So they're the ones I'm gonna show you today. But there are things you can do such as cropping an asset, adding some sharpening to them. Um, you can use like parameters such as for points of interest. Uh, so there's a whole host of things you can do uh, with using these parameters for your assets. The next thing I want to show you is uh, putting those assets into what we call a transformation template. And we recommend this certainly for, for product assets, uh, wherever they are based across the site, um, from a best practice perspective. What they do is allow you to insert those parameters into a named transformation template, which gets appended to the URL. So just to kind of give you an example of this in practice, uh, Misguided, who's a, an Ampians customer, if I was to inspect one of their uh, image URLs here, what you can see at the end of this URL is a transformation template. So this transformation template is used across all of these assets that are displayed on their category page. This means that by having them in a transformation template, they can control them within their account uh, and make changes to them. Perhaps around, they might want to adjust the quality setting to improve performance, is one, one example. So to create a transformation template, I go to this tools icon here and transformation templates, create new. I'll give it a friendly name. It will automatically add in the template. This, the template name is the one that's used on the URL. This is just from uh, helping you within the system understand what that template is. There are some helpers in here for the most common set of actions, uh, or you can just insert the parameters uh, directly in here. So if I just take these ones, I'll just change this one actually, so you can see the effect in a second. I create it and then I publish it. And now I can take this transformation template, remove the parameters and apply it here within dollar symbols. I'm 
sorry, let me just take uh, version. Not sure it's. Oh, I think I've shown one that uh, where it was already 600 pixels. <laughs> let me just update that to make it a little bit more obvious. So I've updated that transformation template. I need to republish it if I make a change. So I'm adding the dollar symbols. Make sure I get the latest version. So you can see now what's that applied is the transformation template that I've set on the PLP uh, within these within the parameters. So it's just what you can continue to do is update if you wanted to, if you're someone interested in performance, this gives you the capability to update the parameters in your transformation template without needing a front end release uh, to make any changes to these. So it's just, just an easier way of being able to manage those types of changes. Video transcode profiles. <clears throat> so I mentioned these are generated um, and applied to videos ingested by the SFTP process automatically. We will set up a number of default transcode profiles for you as part of the account setup, but you do have the ability to create your own transcode profiles as well and set your own audio settings, uh, video settings for bit rate, width, height, etc. Just a point to note on this, if you do set up your own custom transcode profile, just to let your um, customer success manager know, and then they can ensure that transcode profile will get applied to any videos you're uploading via the SFTP automatically, rather than having to manually do that. The other uh, cool feature of videos is that we generate 100 thumbnails for every video that we ingest. Uh, so if you're not happy with the default thumbnail that's going to be in use for the video, then you've got the ability to apply a different one. And then, so that's changed the, the first frame. And one, when I publish that asset, that will be the uh, URL that can be used for the, um, the thumbnail of the video. Okay, uh, so some of the areas of, of interest for you is um, the on-demand platform is where all of the assets are stored, as I mentioned previously. Ampliance Playground, so I've not gone into all the features that are available uh, of Ampliance today. I just want to go cover the basics, but if you're interested in doing things like uh, layering, so creating your own uh, badges, for example, and laying those on top of your product images, or even your content assets, um, then you can use the Dyke Media functionality to do things like that. Uh, there's also the ability of, of creating um, points of interest, for, uh, which I mentioned earlier. So if you've got a banner asset and want to keep that focal point of interest um, as, the, as you change device, then that's again using the Dyke Media functionality and uh, the CSM team can support you on if you want to adopt Stop this feature. There's also some um, more, more technical aspects to using the media functionality, such as the use of ternary operators, which you can also use in conjunction with metadata if you wanted to bring through some values that exist within your metadata um, and bring them to the, to the actual front end view of your when uh, displaying the image. Um, Ampliance Docs has some really good um, videos that go through some of the key things that I went through today. Um, it's also got the full set of parameters that you can use within Dynamic Media. Uh, and then there's, of course, our website, which gives uh, just a general high level overview of some of the benefits of Dynamic Media. I've mentioned this team a number of times today. <laughs> um, every single customer has a, a customer success manager assigned to them. Uh, they are there to support you with using new, new features of the platform as they become available, um, training you on any specific things that you need to do within the platform. Uh, they're there as an escalation point for you as well, 
um, if you need to. Uh, and they can get access to some of our level two support teams uh, if there's an issue that you need their help with. Then there is our support desk. As I mentioned, they're available 365 days of the year, 24 uh, seven. So you can email them at support at .com or, or log a ticket through the, the portal here. And there's also a status.ampliance.com. I'll just show you this quickly. This gives you a live view of um, our systems. And if there are any um, issues reported across the platform, then you'll be updated here. Uh, you can subscribe to updates, so you'll automatically get email notifications if there is an issue with the platform. And we'll keep you updated as to progress um, with resolving any issues. Okay, um, so we've got about 10 minutes uh, for any questions. So did any questions come through, Maddie? They did. Um, so the first one is kind of two in one. Mm -hmm. um, so firstly, um, can you share your thoughts on updating slash purging assets versus adding new assets and pointing the app to use the new assets? Yeah. Um, and on the back of that, do you see, do you think the same person role can do both or does it normally require uh, multiple teams and multiple roles? Okay, yeah. So in terms of um, where, where you, you're replacing an asset that's already live on the site, the, in terms of bypassing the cache, the quickest way you could do that is by uploading a new asset with a different name and using that new published URL. Um, and that will be an uncached version of the new asset that you've you just you want to replace it with. In terms of being able to do that, it really depends on um, whether users are uh, familiar with the e-commerce platform that you're using, or whichever application it might be, um, and whether they can up update the image URLs within that platform to serve the the latest version. So, if the answer to that is yes, then it can absolutely be done by the the business user. Um, it really is dependent on how you're set up as a company and um, whether the users have access to that platform and can make those changes. Real, thanks, Sean. Um, do you have another question? Um, can we serve gifts online as well? Yes. Um, so we have, uh, when we publish assets within the system, there is uh, two, URLs uh, that are <clears throat> available um, that would be appear here for static URLs or static assets. So assets like PDFs and GIFs, for example, you'd use a static URL for that. Uh, that ensures that for a GIF, for example, it will maintain the animation in, in the asset. Um, so you wouldn't use the dynamic URLs for say GIF or PDFs, but you'd use a static URL for that. Cool. Um, I have a couple more. Um, we can see there is a reference to image recognition. Um, is this enabled for customers? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Um, so this is an additional service for Ampliance. Um, it's quite a, a reasonably new feature released last year. Um, and it, you can apply it to assets as they're ingested. So we pick up on uh, detected objects within the asset if there's any detect, uh, text within the asset or if there's any uh, unsaved content within the asset as well. And, and it just gives you if, you, if you weren't able to get custom metadata um, into Ampliance, then this gives you another option whereby Ampliance will look in, look, read that asset, pick out some of the data that exists within that asset. For example, in this one here, it's found out there's a person, face, cosmetics, lips and mouth. So, um, it might just give you a better, a, be a better option if you can't get data for assets um, to help you with searching within your account. Brill, um, another one just come in. Is there support for WEBP image format? WEBP. Oh, WebP. <laughs> yes, there is. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, there is support for WebP. Um, it, it would just be if you uploaded an asset. Just show you. Okay. 
So I can request this asset as uh, .webp. Look at the image info, it's file type webp. And the benefit here is uh, from a performance perspective. So you, it's more performant than a JPEG asset or even a PNG. Um, and uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a smaller file size and, and maintains or is a better image quality than, than JPEG. Great, and looks like we just have one more, Sean. Um, yeah. Can we get a report on what assets we have in our account? Yeah. Um, so we generate on our side uh, something called manifests, and a manifest can target specific asset stores and can be generated in either CSV format or XML format and on a, on a schedule as well. So it might be once it generated on 7 p.m. every day, for example, and that can give you a list of file names, um, maybe the date they were uploaded or, or uh, updated. Um, and it just, yeah, it'll just give you a list of those and you can get those on a, on a frequency, uh, daily frequency if you need to. Well, and sorry, just time for one more that's just come in. Um, do you have any performance data of the platform you can share? Um, I'll need to take that one away. I personally don't have access to that information, but um, it's something that we can raise with uh, our product and ops teams. Brilliant. Um, we'll follow up with that one directly. Okay. Um, brilliant. Thanks, Sean. Um, so that's all the questions covered. Um, thank you all again for joining. Um, a recording of this webinar will be emailed across to you tomorrow. And of course, um, as Sean said, if you do have any questions, um, please get in touch with your customer success manager um, and they'll be happy to help. Um, as Sean also mentioned earlier, we are hosting another session tomorrow at three o'clock, uh, dynamic content training for new users. If you haven't already registered and would like to join, I have put the registration link in the chat box there. Um, so I'll give you a second just to um, open that. Um, and for those that have already registered, you will have already received the email um, with all the details you need. Um, so thank you again for joining and we hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you.